Well, praise the Lord again, folks. Amen. It's uh, it's Tuesday, the 28th, and uh, welcome to my house. Uh, my wife and I both have our nice, fresh cup of dark roast community coffee. I fed the birds. They ought to be happy. And uh, my wife is smiling at me, and so uh, I am grateful to be alive again. Welcome. Welcome to our little Bible study, our little chat, our little uh, coffee with the bishop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I kind of look forward to uh, sharing a couple things with you. And uh, I would like to report that Sunday service was, uh, I just felt like it was great. Uh, our numbers are increasing. Uh, got to preach a little bit. I felt the anointing very powerful, very strong. Uh, if you, after you do this a while, you can, you can tell. Uh, I don't have a way of explaining that in words, uh, but I, I felt it felt like virtue going out of me as I spoke and talked with the people and preached to the people, and so just felt like good things are being accomplished uh, through church and through God's great people. So hope you're having a good day. Hope it. Uh, hope we can help with that just a little bit. Praise God. Thinking of a thinking of a little uh, a, a thought. I have actually taught on it before. Uh, quoted the scripture, Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. That whole chapter there is very interesting. Uh, Paul writing to his son in the Lord Timothy, and just that that one little. Let me. In fact, I just get it to make sure I'm I'm, I'm giving you the right scripture in the right place. That seventh verse. Uh, just to kind of pick that out of that and kind of dwell on that just a little bit. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Uh, we, we don't like to feel like or we don't like to, to think that we're fighting uh, because it's not a physical fight normally. Uh, but, but Paul was talking about something in the spirit that we need to take a hold of this. We need to, <clears throat> we need to think about it. Uh, meditate on this. I have fought a good fight. We are in a fight. We are, we are, we are in a, <clears throat> excuse me, in a battle for our, our very souls and uh, the souls of others, especially if you have any kind of a leadership position. And when you come to God, then you do. Uh, God places you in that. Uh, but he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, watch this, henceforth, or because of that, or for that reason, uh, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Uh, what, a, what a beautiful, beautiful scripture there that Paul was writing to his son. Uh, you know, not, notice the first line of the text, and I know this is simple and not very deep, but the first line, I have fought a good fight, <clears throat> and henceforth, or therefore, or for that reason, I'm, I'm gonna, you're going to have that crown of life, uh, that, that blessing, or, or God's going to pay you for doing this. There, there's, a, there's payday coming. Uh, you know, uh, I, I just feel like this is a, there's a, a, a very important principle. This is just part of many scriptures. In other words, you know, it, we ought to understand this because there, this law or this principle is, is played over and over throughout the scripture. And this is something that I'm pretty sure if you've been in church any length of time and studied the scripture and heard any preaching, you probably know this. So sometimes I think I'm just being the reminder of things. But, but, but this principle is simply this. Those who are willing to participate, and Paul called it a fight. You can call it a struggle, a battle. Uh, you can call it spiritual warfare if you want, because some of that's part of that too. But, uh, but, but we, we choose, okay? If we choose to participate in the race, uh, we're able to claim the crown. Uh, you know, there's a, you know, John Calvin, uh, people move, you know, hundreds of years past the apostles and and they get into a doctrine, it's uh, you got to be careful what you do because it's classed as a work, 
Uh, well, first off, well, I won't get into that doctrine, or, or but but the first off is that John Calvin was not even born until the early 15th century. So these these subjects are settled. Paul was part of the the apostleship and and the writing of the scripture. And so I don't know why anybody would go and pay much attention to John Calvin. I'm not knocking him, uh, but he was just off on his doctrine to the point where uh, I, I don't think he intended this, but, but people are so afraid even to be baptized because they claim it's a work. So you, we, we certainly know that it's the grace of God that saves us. It's not by works that lest any man should boast. So that aside, uh, it seemed like the trend was to, you know, fight the good fight, press your way into the kingdom, you know, these kind of things. So, so if baptism is a works, well, we, we'll just do, we'll just do the work, uh, because that's all part of the plan of salvation. Baptism doesn't save you. We know that, but it's, you don't find a plan of God salvation in the scripture, uh, without baptism. That's just part of it. That's one third part of repentance, water baptism, and then receiving the spirit. But, 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 you know, James says faith without works is dead. So what this simply means is, and we can use works in place of fight here for just a moment. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, because you're saved because of the grace of God, uh, we want to get in this race. We want to get in this fight or this battle. So, so uh, God doesn't draft us. There's no draft board here. Uh, it's all volunteer. And so, uh, we we, we got to get this. Okay. So, so those who fought the fight, you know, or fight the fight, I'll bring that up to uh, to to our time, like today, present. Uh, we, we get to win the prize, the possibility of winning the prize. Uh, the, the ones who, that marched with Joshua, they claimed the spoils of Jericho. Uh, this Again, this is a, a, a principle. You know, someone said, I don't believe in luck, but the harder I work, the luckier I get. It, 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 it overlaps. It's not just in the spiritual. You know, it's, it, you know, it's in the natural. You, you just, you know, we were taught as kids, uh, of course, I, I think about it more now than, than ever before. I, my parents, uh, they went, they lived through the Great Depression. My wife's parents did too. Uh, and so they were taught early on to work. You just get up in the morning and go to work. You don't have a job, get a job. Uh, and that that is natural and that is also spiritual. Uh, I, I've always thought, well, you know, if a person learns how to work, of course, you know, we preach education, get you, get your education, uh, go to school, uh, but and, and then have a work ethic. But even if you don't have a good education, if you don't feel qualified to do the job, if you will get up and show up at the job or at the workplace, a person can make it. Uh, and so, again, a principle throughout the Scripture, the Word of the Lord. And so, so you know, we we just we we'll be beneficiaries of. Uh, putting our shoulder to the plow. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible said she made her way through the press. All that's types, uh, physical and spiritual, uh, that if you want to get anything and you want to get anywhere with God, uh, you have to volunteer into this army. Amen. Think about it. You know, we're, we are even today enjoying the liberty of worship uh, because someone fought, someone stood in the gap, made up the hedge. We're able to speak about it because someone suffered. Uh, they, they volunteered. They decided this is, you know, part of what I do. This is what I've, I've been called to do. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm marching to the beat of, of, of a different drum. And so, so good soldiers, let me throw this in too, just, just for good measure. Good soldiers, they, they suffer chastisement. They, they endure pain. They submit to the authority that's over them uh, in their leadership. Uh, in other words, a good soldier is willing to pay the price. And Hebrews 12 and one says, but if ye be without chastisement, they used to preach to this, this to us often. It seemed to me like even when I was a young person, I knew this scripture. He says, wherefore all are partakers. Uh, then are you bastards and not sons? Are you, that's a King James word. 
uh, used to be a swear word or a curse word that's what, uh, around home when I was coming up, but that just means you're illegitimate, okay? If you be without chastisement, uh, in other words, if you just leave somebody alone, a child alone, a person alone, somebody has to be corrected. Uh, we all do. You know, there's a there's an admonition time. There's correction time. Let me, let, you know, we the uh, we get the word of the Lord, which it is a type of the plumb line or the level, and then we measure by that. And then sometimes we need correcting. And so people who don't take corrections, they're not a good soldier. Amplified says it like this: it says now if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate offspring and not true sons of God, or not true sons at all. Uh, so we have to understand uh, that we're living in a time uh, where we're seeing the results of no discipline. Uh, you know, we've, we've got wonderful youth and young people in our church and around us and uh, of course, there's a, that's a whole generation that's come along now. And you, in fact, uh, up in the Maryland area, now in the South, it's not quite so bad, but in Maryland, if you did, or if you happen to have to discipline your child uh, in any kind of physical way, that you can get in trouble. You can literally go to jail. And of course, it's in people's hearts and in the front of their mind. And, uh, you know, I, you know, all of it is child abuse. And of course, we look at that a little bit different. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a spanking and then there's a beating, okay? So that, that's two different things. And so uh, a little, uh, you, know, you know, spanking on a child to get their attention, it goes a long, long way. But, but we always have the problem with people who overdo that. I understand that too. But, but, but it, to the point now where you can't touch a child, you can't touch a young person. I've always said this uh, for the last several years. I was two things I don't want to be, and that's a police officer, nor a, a public school teacher because they have no authority, they have no power, uh, and because of our, our lenient laws and our, you know, soft peddling everything. And, and so they, uh, they have a really, really tough, tough job to do. Whereas in the scripture, it was totally, totally different. Looked at that, they looked at that totally different. And of course, in my generation, we did too. Uh, but but the Bible says that in the last days uh, will come perilous times, uh, times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear, last days. And so we, we see these things happening right now. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I can get sidetracked here pretty easy. And of course, it is my living room and I'm trying not to preach. And uh, so just go off on all types of things that I can see where folks need a little discipline. And I know we can't do this, but, uh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, somebody should have disciplined that kid uh, and helped them out just a little bit. Uh, but, but he says they will be without natural. I'm reading out of the Amplified. It says people will be lovers of themselves, uh, utterly self-centered, lovers of money, and aroused by an inordinate, uh, greedy desire for wealth, uh, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Got to be really careful what you tune into uh, on social media and even news clips right now because uh, it's just a common thing for people to speak uh, you know, just say ugly things uh, that we've been, uh, you know, we've separated ourselves from that many years ago and uh, just profane, unholy. Uh, but, but you know, the, the Bible tells us here in the scripture that, that in the last days men would be, we're talking about, Jesus said though, in the last days men would be unholy uh, and unthankful. An ungrateful person, an unthankful person. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that God put the unholy and the unthankful right together because I think they're, you know, they're, they're just first cousins. They're connected because if a person is unholy, uh, or, I, or we could say it this way, I believe that being unthankful and ungrateful is unholy. Uh, but but we, think, we think nothing about that in our society uh, but, but 
this is what we fight for or fight against. And this is what we're up against, folks. So it's going to take something more than just showing up at church uh, and feeling our two goosebumps and deciding whether the last preacher or the last week's sermon uh, is going to, was better than this one or this one's going to be better. You know, it just, it, just, it just goes much deeper than that. I just feel like that our, our work is uh, it, it's going to be a tough job. I, 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 uh, I don't have this in my notes, but I remember a story uh, old story uh, that might bring a little humor to our meeting today. Uh, my two brothers, my older brother Earl, and then of course my brother that was five years older than me, we, he's Solon, we called him Peanut, and uh, I wouldn't say this to disrespect them, but they were very, uh, they were kind of, they would take a drink with you and Peanut would smoke a joint and it was, it was pretty common around but my dad had a barn and a he had the cows and pigs and everything else that goes along with all of that. And it was a spring day, uh, warm day, and the honeybees were out. And, uh, you know, this is how the story goes. In fact, uh, in fact, Earl, I think, is the one that's telling the story. He's the one, the first one I heard talk about. It. He was there. And, of course, where you have animals and all that, you have the, you know, have the, you know, the stomp fertilizer, what we call it, the fertilizer, you know, you, 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 that's where the cows are. And sometimes it don't, it doesn't smell too good. And, and that day peanut was sitting up on the, on the fence, on the lot fence. And, uh, you know, Earl had had a drink or two and they were discussing things and, and, uh, peanut had, you know, they got to thinking and looking at the honeybees were out and they were on the cow manure and all of that, all in the yard, all in, in the ground and all over the place, and the smell was ripe. And, uh, you know, the honeybees were buzzing and all over that, and uh, Earl made the statement. He said, now, Peanut, he said, now, just think about this. He said, those honeybees are gonna take that, and they're gonna make honey out of it. And, of course, I think Peanut took another hit, you know, off of his marijuana, you know, weed there, and he uh, thought about it a while, and uh, it was working on him. He said, well, I'll tell you right now. He said, they have their work cut out. And so uh, this is, the, and, and of course you have to admit that that was a thought and that was a little deeper than most of us think about situations. Maybe with the unrest and uh, like Paul was describing here and Jesus described in the last days, men will be unholy, ungrateful, uh, you know, wicked, and all types of things happening. And here we are, the church, right in the middle of all of that. And God's telling us to separate from that, come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you unto me. There is a, a separate, listen, you can't win people uh, to God by joining with them. There has to be a separation of some sort. And of course, when we join in this, this battle, this fight that Paul was talking about, then that will separate us, okay? Uh, from the rest of the world. Uh, the Bible said they will be without natural human affection. So every everything in the world you can possibly think about, and a lot of this we don't even want to talk about. Uh, but 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 I want before we close, I want to bring this point out too that might help us a little bit. All of the ugliness, all the bad, the sinfulness is, is named in the scripture. Uh, but the Bible talks about them men having a form of godliness in the middle of all of this had a form of godliness uh but yet they will reject or deny the power of god uh, men have a form of godliness they will go to church they may support the church financially that's a form you know they have a preacher they have a pulpit uh pews they show up would not miss church for anything and feel the presence of the lord maybe you know uh but but you know the Bible tells us to avoid such people, okay? T t turn away from them. Don't have anything to do with people. Now, maybe we, you know, maybe we should, could learn and pick up a little bit because I was taught just to be friendly with everybody. Be nice to everybody, don't matter. They can be a reprobate, hypocrite. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to be unfriendly. But there is a separation there and you have to decide that with the help of the Lord. You can't buddy up with them. You can't condone what they do. 
Uh, here's what we are. We, you know, we're believers in the miracle working power of God. There is nothing impossible with him. I heard of, uh, about a guy that, uh, you know, supposed to be a Christian, raised in a preacher's home. It just, it just did not believe in demons. There's no such thing. It was just a. It was just some kind of a uh, figment of our imagination of some sort. Well, how can you do that? The same Bible that tells us about Jesus and our Lord talked about. In fact, Jesus cast out demons along with the Apostle Paul and others. And so, how can we pick through the Scripture and choose what we want, leave out what we don't want? So these are the kind of things we have to deal with. We have to confront these things. Okay, whether personally or in the pulpit. We have to talk about it. It has to be taught. Uh, I will close with this. Um, we get whatever we preach or teach. Uh, you know, if, if, we, if it's a weak uh, God, a distant God, far off, vague, uh, we preach that. That's the kind of experience people will receive. But if we preach a personal God, one who cares about us, one that promised to never leave us and never forsake us, then that's what we're going to have. Faith comes by hearing, remember? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So we, we have to tell folks that God is good. He's good all the time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, and so with that note, uh, if somebody said it this way, if God ever blessed anybody, uh, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he will bless people today if he's ever healed anyone. Now, I tell you, I prayed prayers and they didn't get healed. It didn't, ha it, didn't, it didn't happen like I asked God to do it. But you have to figure in the timing. God knows the right time to move and to heal and to bless. He knows the right time to withhold that blessing. It rains on the just and it rains on the unjust regardless of what we do. All right, pray or not pray, okay? But, but we, are, we, are, we are believing God uh, for great and mighty and powerful things. And sometimes we have to wait on that. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we have to believe God in spite of him not moving on our timetable. And so that's what we preach. That's what we, you know, just hold on to God. For in due season, he said, you'll reap if you faint not. And so lots of things swirling around, lots of doctrine swirling around, uh, a lot of people with their ideas. But, but, but I promise you, we have to get to the place where we join this fight. We have, we, we have to feel the need uh, to get in here and fight the good fight of faith. Uh, we know we're going to win. We're going to win. The only way we're not going to win is we, if we quit, if we drop out, okay? Uh, if you just give up. You can walk away from God. Uh, if my people which are called by my name shall, there's a big if. It changes the whole meaning of that whole scripture. If, okay, that makes that scripture conditional. And you see that. You could just go in your, in your uh, Bible study program and uh, just type in if and see how many times it comes up. It, it will blow your mind. But to just think that just because we're who we are and God's who he is and he's, he's mercy and he is all of that, uh, merciful and good and kind, but we have to join up. And so uh, that's what Paul was talking about. You know, I fought a good fight. He didn't, he didn't say I played a good game. He didn't say I just went to church every, every week and was, no, I fought a fight. And so that's how, um, that's how we're going to win this thing. And God's going to help us win it, but we put forth an effort. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to just pray with you and for you again today. I'm, I, I didn't even look at my watch. I'm not sure how long I went. Uh, but, but get your prayer time in and uh, your personal time with God. Uh, I, I like our, our Thursday night prayer, and so we get to pray, and, we, and sometimes we get loud, and sometimes it's soft, and, and uh, you just hear murmuring and people praying, but the, the Spirit of the, you just choose that. And that's a public prayer, uh, in a sense. But sometimes we just, we make sure we have to get our, our personal time with God in, and that's when I talk to God and I feel his closeness and nearness and nobody's around. To, I don't have to worry about anybody listening to what I tell God. And so let me encourage you to do that. We're going to pray with you today. Amen. Don't forget, we got, uh, we got Bible study tomorrow night. 
uh, it will be live streamed, but the church is open, and, uh, and you know that. And so uh, uh, I'd like to see some of you have not seen uh, in a while, and so you're welcome certainly to, to show up. Uh, and so other things happening and going on around the church, make, make sure you're a part of that. Don't cut yourself loose. Don't separate yourself from the body. God, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you for a, a, a wonderful day, Lord, already, the beginning of something great. Amen. Uh, we know, God, that you're going to touch us today and bless us and be with us. You promised in your word that you would never leave us. Amen. So I just pray, God, that those that are listening and watching today would take hold of that faith. Amen. Take hold of the faith. Amen. That all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. And lay claim to their blessing, their victory, their power, the joy that you promised us, God, and you purchased for us. In Jesus' name. Again, we ask you to touch our physical needs today. Uh, touch Brother and Sister Green today and others who are, are sick in their bodies. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And again, we give you glory. We give you honor. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you. I'll see you later.